Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac and in this tutorial I will demonstrate how to use the Danny Mac Eye Designer add-on for Blender. To start the tutorial I'll quickly go over installing the Eye Designer for those that have never installed a Blender add-on. Navigate to File, User Preferences or use Hotkey Control Alt U. Then under the Add-ons tab, click Install from File. Locate the zip file and click Install Add-on from File. All that's left to do is enable the add-on by checking the box next to it. In this tutorial I will demonstrate how you might use the eye designer in a real scenario. Rather than just importing the eye and trying to get it to look right, first import the model in which the eyes will reside. This will allow you to correctly size the eyeball, iris and pupil. With the model imported, navigate to the Eye Designer tab and click Import Eye. Before we start digging into the menus, let's first position the eyes. The main control should be used to roughly find the scale and location of the eyes. You could just move and scale the eyes from the eye controls, but the properties and light rig are parented to the main control, so if there's a big scale discrepancy, it's better to get it roughly correct using the main control. Feel free to move the properties control if you need to. Once the eyes are roughly in place, you can refine the placement and scale by manipulating any of the eye bones in pause mode. Once you're finished, just press the mirror eye button to apply the transforms to the other side. In the eye designer tab, you'll notice a select properties button in each panel. This provides an easier way to select the properties control, which is particularly useful if you need to select it while rendering. The model properties are self-explanatory. The iris size lets you find the appropriate iris size and the same applies to the pupil. These are best manipulated during an IPR render to better see the effect. The cornea bulge slider allows you to add the natural bulge found in realistic eyes. It's easier to see the effect of this when you're not rendering. Notice when you edit the iris size, the bulge adjusts accordingly. Again, the light properties are self-explanatory. Light scale will increase the size of the light, and light brightness will adjust its intensity. You can rotate the light around your model by Alt-Middle mouse scrolling. If you don't want to use the light rig, just delete it. You can add the free HDRI to your world by clicking on the Import Free HDRI button. If you wish to change this for your own custom HDRI, just navigate to the Texture panel and select the new Environment Texture. From here, click the folder icon and locate your HDRI. Now let's move on to the fun part. The hue, saturation and value sliders are there to find the main colour of the iris. Get this roughly where you want it but don't noodle too much since the other parameters may affect the colour and you might find yourself tweaking it later. The iris glow will lighten up the iris to help it stand out. The next three sliders control the iris pattern. The detail size allows you to adjust how much the pattern repeats and the intensity adjusts how prevalent the detail is. In a real eye, this detail actually has a surface quality, so the bump amount allows you to adjust how much the detail protrudes from the iris. The fake shadow amount allows you to darken the upper half of the iris and the location allows you to change how much of the iris is affected. The pupil fall off lets you soften the pupil, but be aware that this overrides the inner rim colour if you push it too much. If this happens and you want the inner rim to be more visible, then you can also tweak the inner rim fall off to compensate. Of course you can also edit the colour of the inner rim using the hue, saturation and value sliders. If you wish to completely remove this colour, simply turn the value all the way down. The outer rim darkness and outer rim fall off are again self-explanatory and if you wish to remove it, simply turn either one down to zero. Now let's look at the cornea. The diffuse SSS slider 
allows you to switch between a diffused white, which is less realistic but quicker to render, and a subsurface white, which is more realistic but takes longer to render. Alternatively, you could slide it somewhere in between for a mixed result. The fall off adjusts how much the white blends into the cornea since a realistic eye has a bit of a blended effect. Turn it down to zero for a sharper stylized look. The index of refraction is currently set to how a real cornea would behave, but if you have a reason to edit this then go ahead, otherwise I'd just leave it as it is. Similarly, the specularity is something I would generally just leave, but it enables you to fine tune how much light is reflected on the cornea. It will also come in handy when I address the fake specular controls in a moment. The next three sliders control the redness of the eye and allow you to add a bloodshot or stoned effect. And again, the labels are fairly self-explanatory. You just have to play around to find your desired look. The fake specular is there for times when you have your lighting just right but you're not quite getting the eye highlight you want or it's not in the place you want. You might be thinking this will result in a lighting discrepancy and you'd be right but generally speaking people will favour this over no highlight present in the eye and is usually not noticeable anyway. Note that this does not work properly when a cornea bulge is active but you'd probably want to save this for a stylized eye anyway. Check the box to turn it on and if required turn down the specularity to remove the real highlight. You can select from five different shapes and you can edit the size, opacity and rotation as you please. When the fake specular is activated you'll also be presented with a new controller in the 3D viewport. This can be used to position the highlight. Now in Blender 2.7x I would recommend selecting it, starting IPR and then pressing G to move it from there. In Blender 2.8 the controls are visible during an IPR render making the process easier. And that's all there is to it with version 1 of this add-on. I intend to update this for Blender 2.8 which of course will be a free update for those that purchase the 2.7 version. And if you have any problems, be sure to let me know. I regularly check social media, but the best place to ask would be via the vendor from which you purchased the add-on. Thanks.